Hi, David from Electric Teaching here, and we're going to use the Riemann sums to get the area underneath a curve, or between a curve and the x-axis. The idea is we're using a sum of infinite rectangles to find this area. Function we're looking at, 4x minus x squared, it's graphed right here, on the interval from 1 to 3. I've already made a video that shows kind of how to do this and what's the understanding behind the Riemann sums, where you're making little rectangles, infinite rectangles, to add them up. So we're going to go from 1 to 3 here. In this problem, this video, I'd just like to get to the algebra and really kind of focus on that. Limit is n goes to infinity. We're going to sum up infinite. See, n goes to infinity. n. We're going to sum up infinite rectangles. Okay, the rectangles will have a width of delta x, and they're going to have a height where you plug and chug values of x. And we're going to increment those values of x based on how many rectangles here, or again, based on the infinite rectangles. We're going to use right endpoints on that. We're going to use right endpoints there, so keep that in mind when we do the plug and chug. Delta x is always b minus a over n, but I'd rather you not just think of it as a formula there. I'd rather you think of it as 3, as the length of 2. So we're going to take the length of 2 and we're going to divide it by n partitions, or n dividers, which will create our n rectangles. Then um, the xi, the xi now, so this xi starts at 1, and the first plug and chug, the right end point here, this line going up, is 1 plus a delta, and the next one's 1 plus 2 deltas, and 1 plus 3 deltas. So that's the understanding why you have to plug and chug 1 plus 2 over n, a delta, and then i of them, or letting i increment 1 through infinite n's. So that's the idea there. I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus on this problem right here. The width times the height. The width times the height. We're going to try to get this simplified. The width, 2 over n, times the height. Now I'm going to plug in the function for x minus x squared. This x uh, x i value. So that'll look like 4 times 1 plus 2 i over n. Okay, minus x squared, so minus that quantity squared, 1 plus 2i over n quantity squared. Keep doing a little bit of algebra here, just basic stuff. We're going to take 2 over n, keep it on the outside, ready to bring that across. Let's go ahead and clean up the inside. We've got a distributing of 4, 4 times 1, and then 4 times the 2i over n. That's plus 8i over n. Careful with this one. I'm going to try to expand this, binomial expand that, or foil it out as some, sometimes we say, and then negative will be applied to every term. So I mean, that's what this minus sign is. So I'm going to negatively distribute across that. Squaring the 1 with the minus sign, minus 1. Middle term is multiplied and doubled, so that with the minus sign, that'll be minus 4i over n. Last term is quantity squared, so or this, this term squared, 4i squared over n squared with the negative negative 4 i squared over n squared. Before I actually distribute the 2 over n, it looks like we can clean this up a little bit. It looks to be like 4 minus 1 is 3. We also have the 8 i over n as a like term with the 4 i over n, so I'll collect them, 8 minus 4, or positive 4 i over n. Last term looks to be a negative, negative 4 i squared over n squared. 2 over n can now be distributed. Okay, 2 over n can now be distributed to all three terms. Keep that in mind. We're going to get 6 over n plus 8i over n times n squared. 2 over n, multiply the 2 across the top, n on the bottom here, same idea, negative 8i squared over n cubed now. Okay, let's bring back that summation idea. We are planning on doing the summation of i, starting at i equal 1, going up to n rectangles here, and we will apply the summation. I still have the limit on the outside I'll bring down here in a second. So I've got the summation of this, which then will be broken up and do a little summation tricks here. So I'm going to rewrite this as, actually let me work over this way. So I'm going to rewrite this as the sum of 6 over n plus this 8 over n squared is a constant, so I'm going to pull the constant out of an infinite set of i's, i being 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to factor out, in a sense, an infinite set of 8 over n squared, or an n set at least. Um, and now the summation of i is left. Okay, again, the same idea, minus 
n cubed. I'm going to factor that part out, so minus 8 over n cubed. And then what's left is the summation. The summation is, again, distributed. I'm just collecting them and regrouping them with summation tricks of i squared, of i squared there. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring that down now. So it looks like if I sum up 6 over n, and remember each one of these is from uh, uh, up to n amounts, up to n amounts. So if I sum up 6 over n n times, that's 6 over n times n. If I sum up the i formula with the 8 over n squared out, it'll look like this. 8 over n squared times n times n plus 1 over 2. So this, this is the formula for the sum of i that we're using here. Minus, minus an 8 over n cubed, minus an 8 over n cubed, and the formula for sum of i squared is n, n plus 1, times 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. So I have now applied the summation. I actually should let the limit actually run now. I'm going to think about the limit as n goes to infinity on the outside here. Actually, before I do this limit, it looks like I can clean this up a little bit and rewrite it. So this will be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, infinity. Okay, and let's see, 6 times n over n, cancel the n's, and we're going to have a 6 here. Over here, an n cancels with one of the n's there. The 2 cancels with the 8, leaves a 4. So if I distribute the 4 across the top there, I'm going to get a 4n plus 4, 4 times 1. And on the bottom, the only thing left is an n. So I have that over n. Minus, let's clean this up a little bit. I've got a 4 and a 3 that's going to be canceled or remaining after we cancel the 2's. Same idea, that n cancels and leaves an n squared. And so I'm going to have 4 times this quantity. So that is 4 times those two binomials multiplied will make a 2n squared plus a 3n plus 1. On the bottom, it looks like I have a 3 and an n squared, a 3 and an n squared. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit here. Now what we've got going on is we're going to let the limit run. If n goes to infinity, it doesn't really affect the 6, so leave that alone. As n goes to infinity here, the 4 really doesn't matter. You focus on the strongest term on top, and the strongest term or the only term here on the bottom. The n's will cancel. Think of a billion over a billion. It'll cancel and leave 4. That's like letting the limit run. Over here, we're going to have a minus, minus. Okay, and the only thing I really care about is this first term. This first term will dominate it. It's the most powerful term. It's the highest degree. So I really don't care about even distributing the 4 and being very meticulous here about the algebra. I really want to focus on what's going to happen with the limit. And if you focus on the first terms here and then the only bottom term, you got a minus 8n squared over 3n squared. Same as the n's. These n squares will cancel as we get closer and closer to infinity. And that's going to leave minus 8 over 3. Final answer looks to be pretty close here. 6 plus 4, 10. Okay. And minus 8 thirds, that's 2 and 2 thirds. So this equals 7 and 1 third. 7 and 1 third. I've written a program where I actually can fill in the area underneath the curve. And so here is the actual area underneath the curve. And what happens is, is I've actually had to calculate to uh, run the integral from 1 to 3. And it uses the left end and right end in trapezoid approximations. And you can see that I'm actually approaching 7, uh, seven and a third. So this kind of verifies that my math is on the exact answer correct. 7 and a third. You can also check that on your TI-83, which is always a wise idea on your homework. My name is David from Electric Teaching, and I hope that I have helped.